Queuing is one of the concepts covered in operations management. In this video, we will examine what is meant by the term queuing in this context and what the theory is all about. We will also examine the different types of queuing models in operations, queuing behaviors, and the mathematical model of probability used in queuing theory called Little's Law. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First, let's define what is meant by queuing theory in the context of operations management. Although queuing theory has its roots in mathematics, it could also be applied to the planning and control of operations. Queuing theory is used to address staffing, scheduling, and customer service shortfalls. Considering this, we define queuing theory as the mathematical study of waiting lines. So, when thinking of queuing, think of waiting lines with serving points. The line could involve the movement of people, objects, or information. Considering this, the objective of applying queuing theory in operations management is to achieve balance between capacity and demand, or between inventory and demand. In other words, queues refer to linear waiting processes which are subject to arrival times or the calling population. As they say, time is money. The objective of applying queuing theory to operations management is to reduce or eliminate the costs associated with unnecessary waiting times at the expense of the customer and the operations. Considering this, we argue that the total cost of queues equals waiting costs plus service cost. Where waiting costs are incurred by the customer, service costs are incurred by the business or operations. This being said, the main problem of queuing is to determine the optimal service level that minimizes costs associated with queues. It is worth noting that it is assumed that there is an inverse relationship between customer waiting costs and business service costs. Meaning that, the higher the customer waiting cost, the lower the service cost and vice versa. This is because the longer customers wait to be served by basic low-cost services, the more costs customers incur. Hence, trying to keep the service cost low will lead to dissatisfied customers as this cost is transferred onto them. However, to reduce such customer dissatisfaction as a result of the cost they incur while waiting to be served by your business, it is imperative to invest in service costs. This requires improving the service through, for example, hiring more staff, introducing machinery, self-service function, and so on. The objective of any operations manager is to find the optimum cost that keeps either costs to a minimum through capacity management. Let's now illustrate this graphically using these axes that shows the relationship between operating costs and capacity levels. The waiting cost is illustrated using a negative curve. This implies that, the lower the capacity levels for attending to customers, the higher the operations costs, and vice versa. As for the service cost, this is illustrated using a positive curve which suggests that the more the business invests in service provisions, by increasing capacity in response to increasing demand, the higher the operations costs will be. However, keeping capacity fixed or lowering it to save costs irrespective of demand levels will lead to lower operations costs. The optimal level of cost is the point where the waiting cost curve intersects the service cost curve. Here, the service cost incurred by the operations is compensated by the waiting cost incurred by the customer. In other words, service cost equals waiting cost. Now that we have introduced you to queuing theory and the costs associated with queuing, let's now illustrate what a basic queuing model looks like. But first, there are three things you need to bear in mind regarding queuing models and its management. Queuing models have three major components. The first is the arrival time. This is divided into two types which could be constant or finite, and variable, random, or infinite in its pattern. The second is the service pattern. This could be based on first come first serve, last come first serve, service random order, or service based on priority. The third is the service structure. The service structure refers to the queue and server structure and there are three types of these which will be discussed later in our illustration. Having identified the main components of a queue, let's illustrate what one looks like using a supermarket setting. In this setting, there is a serving point manned by the shopping attendant or a cashier at the till. There are also customers waiting in a queue or waiting line. The length of the queue is called the queue size. This refers to the number of people one queue can hold. This is where we now discuss the queue structure where we might wish to consider the number of queues and the number of servers. For example, there could be a single queue with a single service point, or a single queue with multiple service point. There could also be multiple queues with multiple service points. 
For this queuing model or system, we will be illustrating using a single queue with a single service point. Now that we have identified the queue structure, it is worth noting that every queue has a calling population or queue source. In this setting, the calling source will be the supermarket aisles where commodities are obtained to be paid for at the till. The calling population in this setting determines the arrival or inter-arrival times of customers. Customer's inter-arrival time could be based on either finite or infinite loading systems. This refers to the difference between the time subsequent customers arrive. Arriving customers usually follows the Poisson distribution pattern. Poisson distribution here is used to measure the number of customers arriving. The arriving customers are treated as random discrete variables. This is because the number of customers arriving cannot take on any value and are only in integers. For example, we cannot have 1.5 customers arrive. Therefore arriving customers are accounted for, using whole numbers. The duration of time it takes the shopping attendants to attend to each customer is referred to as the service time. This usually follows a negative exponential distribution which also largely depends on the type of queue. By exponential distribution, we imply the probability that describes the time or inter-arrival intervals between customers in the Poisson distribution. The random variable here is customer's inter-arrival time and it is treated as a continuous variable. This is because the interval time of arrival for each subsequent customers could be any value from an infinite number of values. There is also the queue discipline which is the queue service pattern. As previously identified, the service pattern could use either the first come first serve, last come first serve, service random order, or the service priority discipline systems. One more thing to consider when examining queuing systems is the behavior of customers on the queue. Depending on the queue size and type, customers respond differently to queues. The common reactions and attitude of customers are balking, reneging, and jockeying. Customers balk when they arrive at the queue and choose not to join due to the length of the queue, and because the cost of waiting is significantly higher than the satisfaction that comes from the service. For reneging, the customer is already on the queue but chooses to give up and exit the queue without being serviced. This could be due to increasing waiting costs while waiting to be served. As for jockeying, this normally occurs in a queuing structure with multiple queues and multiple servers. The behavior of the customer here is that they switch or continue to switch between alternate queues in an effort to reduce waiting costs. It is worth noting that customers could exhibit more than one queuing behavior depending on the type of queuing structure. Now let's use a bit of simple mathematics to make sense of all we have discussed so far about queuing and operations management. To be able to do this, we will need to use certain features of a typical queue which include the arrival time of customers, the queue size, and the queuing system or structure. These are important measurements to an operations managers when managing queues. A well-known mathematical model used in managing queues is Little's Law. Little's Law relates these metrics via the average rate of arrivals to the system. This fundamental law has found numerous uses in operations management and managerial decision making. However, Little's law is commonly used to determine the work in progress or the amount of items in a queuing system. Also, Little's law very well summarizes everything we have been discussing about queues. For a quick recap, let's schematically illustrate this again. Discrete items arrives at some rate into the queuing system, in this case customers. As they arrive, they form a queue which is dependent on the service rate, until every customer receives their service. In Little's law, the average number of customers or items in the system is represented by L. The average waiting time for customers in the system is represented by W, where lambda is used to represent the average number of items or customers arriving per unit time. Based on this, the law is that the average number of customers in the system, L, equals W, which is average customer waiting time, multiplied by lambda, which is the average number of customers arriving per unit time. Now, let's quickly consider a simple practical example using this formula. Let's take a visa processing office such as the United Kingdom Visa and Immigration Office as an example. For each visa application, it takes two hours to process. In the office, there is a target of 12 applications per day. The visa office works 24 hours in a day. So based on this information, what is the work in progress or how many visa application do we have in the queuing system? Using Little's Law's formula of L which is the number of applications in the queuing system equals W multiplied by lambda. 
W is the waiting time or the time it takes to process a visa application which is 2 hours. As for Lambda, this is the average number of applications arriving per day or in 24 hours which is 12 applications divided by 24 hours. Therefore, the work in progress L is equal to 2 hours multiplied by 0.5 which is one application in the queuing system. Note that using this formula you should also be able to calculate the value of W the average waiting time and lambda the average number of items arriving per unit time. All you have to do is to make the unknown value the subject of the formula. Considering this, the formula for lambda will be L divided by W, while the formula for W will be L divided by lambda. Now your turn. Using a manufacturing system as an example. It takes three days to process an order. While the production process is running, it has been found that five orders are queued up while one is being processed. The company only works five days a week. So, how much order can the production system produce in a week? Please, pause the video now to attempt this simple question. We hope you were able to answer the exercise. Well, that will be all for this video and we hope you have found the video useful. Please, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Kindly look forward to our future videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.